Well, hey, man, so um, I want you to, to go through, um, if you can, for a little bit, and then we'll get into just some general business stuff. Um, what are some absolute game-changing moves that you've made in your business that you wish you would have done sooner? So what I'm hoping happens is, is that you come to 8% Nation in Vegas 2020, baby. You're coming, okay? And I want somebody to come up to you because you're going to have a big name tag that's going to say your name on it. And they'll be like, I watched your, your podcast. And I changed the way I do business because of that talk. You will have that if people know who you are, because that's our people, right? So what, what do you want them to hear? Okay, so um, I'd say, I mean, one game changer is what we just talked about in terms of changing our sales process, right? From being, okay, let's just buy some crappy leads and, and give a really fast, quick apples to apples quote, right? So just getting out of that game and going into the value discovery game um, has been a game changer for our, our agency. Um, we are more focused on the customer experience, right? So every company will say, well, we've got great you know, uh, customer service. Every company will say that. Um, and what we've learned is the difference between customer service and customer experience. And customer experience is how, to, how does the person feel at the end of the transaction, right? Or at end of the conversation. And so we put a lot of focus now more than we ever did before on what's this person going to feel when they get off the phone with us or when they walk out of our agency. So even in our office last year, we, we changed things up. Some of the stuff sounds silly, but um, you know, we, we put in the, uh, we, we put in these uh, essential oil vape, vaping sort of things in the office to make sure that we've got the exact smell that we want in our office, right? We have, we have you know, I, I make sure that I've got my, uh, my music uh, that I've selected for the office to, for the correct ambiance in the office. I've got a, you know, an antique looking popcorn machine uh, in, the, in the waiting area, which, you know, we'll, we'll put some popcorn in there and people, they just, they love that. They love the smell. It takes them back, right? And we're just getting into the psyche and we want people to feel comfortable when they're in the office. Now, of course, a lot of the business, most of the business is, is done over the phone. So um, that's all, that, that aspect of it is only helping um, the walk-ins. And, and we do have a, a bunch of clients who do walk in. But um, just the, the attitude of making sure our customers getting off the phone saying, wow, you know, he or she was really good. She explained everything to me. She didn't try to ram any, uh, you know, uh, any products down me just, you know, because I was making a payment. Um, and, and, and just focusing on what's the customer's experience and are we earning a referral? Because ultimately that's what we want, right? We want to grow and we want as many referrals as humanly possible. So uh, one of the game changers, like I said before, was trying to grow our referral. So one thing that we do is for all new business, um, they all get either mailed or emailed um, a, a report card, okay? And the report card is a short little survey, uh, just asking them about their experience and, and what they enjoyed about the experience. Um, and if they would want to ever refer any uh, friends or family to us and if they and if they are interested there's lines for that contact information well you'd be surprised how many people either mail that back to us or email back to us um, with great feedback um, with products that they might like more information on and a few friends and family for us to to give a call to so that gives us a lot of feedback um, another thing we started doing was uh, on all new business they're getting a follow-up call from our service team uh, doing an introduction phone call. So, you know, their interaction at, after the sale is made has primarily just been with the salesperson. But we need to let them know that when they got a call up and they've got a billing question or they got a coverage question, I don't want that call going to the salesperson. I need my sales team selling and not getting caught into an hour long conversation about why do I owe, you know, $3 more this month than I did last month, right? So, what we do is we go out of our way and we do a welcome call and our, one of our representatives will call up the customer, introduce themselves as uh, being on our customer experience team. And that's where she's going to let them, okay, here's all of our contact information. 
here's where you can let me help you get set up online let me help you get set up with your app so you've got access to everything um, let me explain how our office works right so if you've got product questions uh, or you think about buying something you're going to speak to the sales team but if you've got coverage questions customer services you're going to be speaking to us right so this way we're training our customers on how we work and not so you know so that they're not calling up just asking for the salesperson um, that's important so that's allowed our sales team to focus more on the sales and let our service team who lives and breathes service handle the calls that they're supposed to do so that's helped us become more efficient and have the people who have specialties focus on their specialties um, also you know my agency is it may not be the largest uh, team, but even so, I've got someone on my team that a big part of their focus is as a claims specialist. Now, my, you know, the corporation that we work under obviously has claims team, and they got claims representatives, and very standard practices if a customer calls up and they've got claims questions or they've got complaints, it's, okay, well, you can call 1-800, you know, claims department, or maybe you can say, I'll just get the claims rep, you know, on the phone. But the problem is, is that then we lose all control, right? So we talk about, we talked before about brand. How can I build my brand and control my brand if I'm outsourcing all the service and being at the mercy of some corporate representative in a different state, right? I can't allow a, a potentially bad apple to ever mess with with my brand and potentially lose a client right and that's more work and, so and more expensive I make too, sure that to do I've that got a claims representative that's in my office that when a claim comes in when we get a, an email that so and so got into a car accident or they had some uh, you know water loss in their home we're making that phone call we're following up making sure they have all the information they need all the contact information they need let them know that if at any point throughout the sales process that there's any bumpy roads, if they didn't get a call back when they needed a call back, if they're being told that they're not going to get paid as much as they anticipated, whatever it is, to call us and to get us involved. This way, we're making the phone calls. We're doing all the work for them. We're making sure if we have to, you know, expedite, uh, you know, an adjuster going to the scene to, to look at a car or go to the house, whatever we have to do. Uh, to help control the situation and come out with a you know a positive outcome where the customer saying thank you you helped me because the bottom line is in the insurance world right as corny as it sounds and I was kind of brought up uh, being told this is that they're not buying the bill right they're not buying the piece of paper they're buying a promise that if something bad happens they're going to be taken care of so every time a claim comes in that's your time to prove that you're worth the money because yeah. they can always find somebody else that's cheaper. So if you can't, if you don't take care of them when they're coming to you asking and saying that something bad just happened to them, then you don't deserve to keep the client. So I don't want to outsource that. I rather I'm still okay with paying, um, you know, the wages and the time to have someone in my office take a little bit more control of that experience. And ultimately, I think that helped us um, maintain our book and allows allows us to to grow at the rate that we've been growing. Wow, you just added 50 jobs across the country today. <laughs> so, so Responsibility gonna, rationing. So what's going right? to say, that's a good that's, point. I'm going to hire that person. You that's, know what I'm that's so good and so brilliant because so many of these small agencies out there, the salespeople spend so much time doing service or all these small agencies will just push people to the 800 number because it's easy and convenient for them. and um, Gosh, you know, they'll, man, and that's then, and then, so good. and then complain whenever the customer service in the big box didn't treat their client right and complain and blah, 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 and write a letter to their supervisor and district manager or whatever, while you're just taking the expense to just take control and be a winner. You know what I mean? Do, control what you can control, you know?